is the Galais Trophy for pre-66 Grand Prix cars. And here we go, then the race gets underway as the cars all accelerate up past the wing into Abbey. And it's going to be yes, just ahead. Uh, it's going to be just ahead, Will Nuttall. But Sam Wilson in second place being challenged there around the outside there by Michael Gans, I think, as they come into the site of, Russell, of uh, Alistair for the first time. It certainly looks like uh, it's uh, the uh, 18 car of Sam Wilson, in fact, who gets through to second in the end. They sort themselves out. Miles Griffiths is in fourth place. Uh, very obvious, uh, the uh, white car of Michael Gans is now third. So uh, after briefly being up to second, he gets pushed back to third. And then it's Peter Horseman who's fifth. And those five cars already starting to break away from the rest. Uh, we also noticed that uh, Michael O'Brien, I think, is already up to the front of the second group. Right, so the lead is uh, then held at the moment by Will Nuttall. Right behind him is Sam Wilson in the Lotus 18. And then we've got uh, Michael Gans in the Cooper that uh, became a Formula One car just outside this period, but is allowed in because it was built for the Tasman series originally, the white Cooper Michael Gans. Uh, in fourth place is Miles Griffiths in the front engine, Lotus 16. Will Nuttall then leading. Peter Horsman going past Miles Griffiths into Cox Corner, so the Lotus 18 with the 21 type bodywork just ahead of the Lotus 16, its predecessor. Lead us back with you, Alistair. Yes, battle for the lead now is between uh, Will Nuttall and then uh, Sam Wilson and Michael Gans, and then it's a short gap back to the second group of two cars, which uh, is uh, number 22, Peter Horseman, just ahead of Miles Griffiths in the front engine Lotus, and uh, in eighth place is Michael O'Brien, eighth from ninth on the grid, so only made up one place so far. Down into Stoke Corner then, Sam Wilson goes through on the inside and takes the lead from Will Nuttall, so it's the Lotus 18 that now leads, but Will tightens his line coming out of the corner, almost gets back level with the Lotus, but it's Sam Wilson then who leads the way uh, into club. Michael Gans, we saw him earlier on, going uh, great guns in various other sorts of cars during the course of the day, uh, now in the single-seater. So as they come through to complete the first lap, it is the Lotus in the lead, the Cooper in second place, the Cooper in third place, and the front engine Lotus in fourth place. There's a separate category, there's a separate podium we have at the end of the race for the, the top three front engine cars. So Sam Wilson leads, though, in the Lotus 18, the first of the rear engine Lotus cars. Bit of a twitch there, and he goes wide, coming back into your sight. Yes, and uh, Will Nuttall tries to go up the outside, but there's no room, so he drops back into second. So uh, very much the leader now, Sam Wilson, Will Nuttall, second, Michael Gans, third. And up into fourth place, a, a stunning drive again from Miles Griffiths in the front engine car, up against all these rear engines. Uh, those four go through, and then next up it's uh, 22, Peter Horseman, then 11, next up John Fairley in the Brabham. Yeah, John Fairley, and he is followed by Barry Cannell in the next of the Brabham's. Uh, looking on the inside, Will Nuttall as he going to Brooklyn's, not quite able to get level, so uh, it remains Sam Wilson in the Lotus 18 in front. Visualise, uh, apart from his very colourful helmet, this could be John Surtees, Jim Clark in his Ireland driving that Lotus 18 in the 1960 Grand Prix season, the first year that, as I say, Team Lotus ran rear engine cars. And uh, John Fairley in the ex Chris Irwin, Denny Helm, Brabham BT 1119, right behind Peter Horsman's Lotus 18 with the 21 star bodywork. John Fairley behind in the number 11 BT 1119 Brabham, based on the Formula One car from 1964. Lead us back with you. Experienced uh, historic driver Sam Wilson has just started to ease away now from second place Will Nuttall, equally experienced but not able to keep up with Sam Wilson. Then it's Michael Gans in third, and uh, I think uh, possibly closing up, we'll see at the timing line, but uh, I think Miles Griffiths might just be catching Michael Gans. Well, yeah, well, we'll see, as you say, at the timing line. At the moment, uh, well, let's say, the, the screen's saying that to the gap between Michael Gans and Miles Griffiths, Griffiths was 1.27 seconds. Anyway, we've uh, got John Fairley now ahead of Peter Horsman. And Barry Cannon closing up. The former chairman of the HDPCA closing in on the current chairman of the HDPCA, Peter Horsman. And uh, out of club corner, Sam Wilson beginning to pull away from Will Nuttall. Sam, now one and a half seconds or more clear. 
Peter Horsman having been passed by Barry Cannell, looking for a way back, but not able to find it. So he's in sixth place now, uh, in seventh place now. Uh, Tom Dark in the number 101, 1960 Type 51 Cooper, as raced by the Yeoman Credit Team for Tony Brooks and Olivier Jean de Biat, amongst others, in, in eighth place. In ninth place is number 69, Ben Tilly with another Lotus 18. And in 10th place is Michael O'Brien uh, in the number 94 Brabham BT40, one and a half litre Formula One car. Sam Wilson. A shame about the helmet in the way. I'm sure he, he had, likes to have a colourful helmet, but it kind of clashes with uh, the period image of these cars. Coming through Luffield then now, and the lead is already heading past the Heritage Pits. There on the screen, number 10 car in second place, Will Nuttall, in the sort of Cooper that was raced in the 1960 Formula One World Championship by Jack Brabham to win the World Championship and by Bruce McLaren. Leader back with you, bit of a wiggle as he breaks for Beckett. Uh, yeah, so much of a wiggle that he went off track there across the green and white curbing. So uh, a mistake from Sam Wilson, which allows Will Nuttall to close up a little. Uh, then uh, a very good battle now for third place. So Miles Griffiths has caught Michael Gans and uh, they're on to the hangar straight once again. And the Lee, I think, despite a little bit of a wiggle, the lead is extended, but Michael Gans really under pressure now from Miles Griffiths in the Lotus 16, the 1958 Formula One Lotus. Last of the front engine cars, not very reliable in period. But recent, well, not recent, uh, the racing, I mean, it's like racing for many years now, the Lotus 16. Philip Walker owns this car and has enjoyed huge success with it for many years now. And now giving Miles Griffiths the chance to race it. So that is now three laps completed. A new fastest lap by Sam Wilson. And his advantage over Will Nuttall now just over two seconds. And John Fairley is a man on the move. He's closing in on Miles Griffiths, who's, of course, closing in on Michael Gann. So it's a three-way fight for third place, Alistair. Yes, that's right. And uh, John Fairley actually just locks a break behind Miles Griffiths as they come into the loop now and uh, turn left. So it's a three-car battle suddenly. Uh, Michael Gans thought he was in a reasonably comfortable position, but not anymore as he comes out through Aintree. Miles Griffiths behind him, John Fairley caught him. Uh, and then next up, it's Barry Cannell and Peter Horseman. We seem to have lost Michael O'Brien. Yes, he's uh, been touring slowly, losing places, so I think you'll see him in the pits when he gets there. Michael Gans then in third place through Brooklands into Luffield. Oh, bit of a twitch there by Michael. He caught the moment, but that's given Miles Griffiths a real chance of closing in on the Cooper, which is still just ahead. The car in the white livery as when it was raced by Timmy Mayer and Bruce McLaren in the Tasman series, although it subsequently went to John Love, and that's when it became a Formula One car that nearly won the 1967 South African Grand Prix in the hands of the uh, Rhodesian driver, John Love. Well, he's recovered and got a few lengths over Miles Griffiths, I would say, Alistair. Uh, yes, uh, well, no, not probably not. No, he's, uh, he's still right behind. But I think Miles is very conscious of John Fairley, so he's probably slightly eased his pace to uh, make sure he doesn't lose that place as they went through Beckett's. Yeah, well, Michael Gantz had that, that moment that... Uh, he just about held. And now John Fairley going for the inside line into Stoke Corner and gets ahead of the Lotus 16, does he? Yes, he does. There's about five years between these two cars, the Lotus 16, the 1958 car, the Brabham based on a 1963-64 car. And they complete their fourth lap Sam Wilson, meanwhile, two and three quarter seconds, 2.75 seconds, he is now ahead of Will Nuttall. Who just today seemed to have an answer to the pace of young Sam. But John Fairley, is, you'll see, Alistair, is closing up onto Michael Gans, who now looks seriously under threat. Yeah, absolutely, yes, as they come into village. Uh, Michael Gans staying wide, not going defensive into the right-hander, but John Fairley not quite close enough 
to uh, slide up the inside there, but as they go into the loop, gap stays about the same, and uh, Miles Griffiths a similar distance behind John Fairley, so not out of the picture yet as they go down the Wellington Strait once again. Leaders, of course, already at uh, Luffield. The leading front engine car, of course, is uh, the Miles Griffiths Lotus 16 in fifth place now. Second of the front engine cars, uh, you have to go down to the number 28 car, which is the scarab of Eddie Maguire, which is in 12th place, and Julian Brooks in 14th place in the number 30 scarab. The American Formula One cars have arrived too late to be successful. Michael Gans then coming through Woodcut Corner with John Fairley moving to the inside line as they come out of the corner. And taking the place, no, not quite. It's still just Michael Gans in front in yes. the little white Cooper. Coming up over the uh, the crest, and uh, but Gans loses the position on breaking for Beckett. So a good move there from John Fairley, but then he runs a little wide, and Michael Gans says thank you very much and goes back through round the outside. So the place changed twice in the first two elements of Beckett's, uh, and it's back to Michael Gans again as they go out cha through Chapel. Yes, it's a good little battle, this, isn't it? Michael Gans running with a two and a half litre engine as is uh, John Fairley, though actually he runs a slightly larger engine, 2.7 litre engine, 3 litre capacity limit for the class that he runs in, class 12. It's a battle for class 12 between these two, actually. Just the first two cars are running in class 7B. So John Fairley now ahead by the looks of things. Established in third place. And Michael Gans pushed out for the moment to fourth place. And once more within the sights of Miles Griffiths. And Barry Cannell in the red and white Brabham, not that far behind. Warning flag about track limits. We haven't had those. Oh, it was the first one of the weekend. Which at modern race meetings, you uh, or meetings for modern cars, you get regularly. But it's a driver who competes in modern cars. Tim De Silva, the Lotus 24, getting the warning flag about track limits being exceeded once too often. Through it again, you end up with a penalty. But it's uh, remarkable that we've hardly had one of those all the way through the weekend until now. And side by side, Lotus and Cooper and Miles Griffiths goes through, does he? Or oh, Miles Griffiths, uh, no. uh, Michael Gans hangs on on the outside and retains the place, just about. Andrew. Yeah, just a uh, little uh, interesting uh, side tale. The number 49 car, Andrew Beaumont's Lotus 18. If people see that car, it's in the famous BRP colours, the very lime green colours. And... Uh, the chief mechanic of that car is now in his 90s. In period, uh, Tony Robinson has been here today. So that's really nice. And so he's seeing a car that he worked on over 50 years ago. Yes, Tony, an associate member of the BRDC. So, yes, indeed. Uh, enjoys coming to Silverstone. Some years ago with Ian Wagstaff, he wrote his uh, life story, which is a good read about the yeah. what it's like. Yeah. Yes, it did. But Ian Wagstaff is also writing a BRP book, separate from the Tony Robinson book. And I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, and it's been put on one side at the moment because he's got it's a personal project, and he's got projects paying him lots more money. So uh, oh, uh, right. we'll see that BRP book in the end, won't we? Hope so. Uh, and also the crash helmet of Sam, who is uh, leading a race, Sam Wilson. Uh, when we get to uh, the victory podium, I'll tell you a story about that. It is based on a famous racing car, actually. OK. So, if you get a close shot of it, and you see the colour scheme of it, then you'll know what it is. All right, well, I'll try and keep an eye out for that. If okay. we get tested on it. Thank you, Andrew, for that. Uh, in fact, there's another car in the BRP green livery, uh, which is further up the order. That's Graham... T uh, not Graham, silly. I, I, I mean... Uh, Tom Dark in eighth place, number 101, ahead of Stuart Tilly, uh, Ben Tilly, I mean. Uh, so Tom Dark in number 101, that's a car that was also from the uh, British Racing Partnership Yeoman Credit Team in 1960. Well, still the battle rages. Uh, Michael Gans has his hands full. And a bit of opposite lock there. 
Alistair. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, we're also watching the one just ahead as well because, uh, yeah, Barry Cannell has caught the Miles Griffiths, Michael Gans battle, but just ahead, John Fairley is almost with Will Nuttall yeah. now for second place. Yeah, Andrew? Another quick ad I forgot in. Uh, just to tell you, uh, Richard Tarling, the ex Formula Palmer Audi champion, who is in that South African Asa guy car, yeah. he's got a terrible misfire in that. Right. So it keeps coming by, and I can hear it's on three cylinders. Well, we're soon going to, well, we've got the, the Gans Griffiths Cannell battle just going through Woodcote, not far up the road ahead of them, uh, is the second place car, Will Nuttall with John Fairley closing in. Now, the gap between Sam Wilson and Will Nuttall, 6.2 seconds, we've got four and a quarter minutes to go, so Sam Wilson leads Will Nuttall by 6.2 seconds, but the gap between Nuttall and Fairley is very little, Alistair. Absolutely it is, yeah. They're, they've just passed the back marker coming in, and that's uh, John Fairley has closed right up, and the second back marker has been passed now, kept out of the way, and uh, onto the hangar straight they go. But, as you say, John Fairley now very much in a challenging position for second place. Now John Fairley gets level with Will Nuttall and goes past him. So John Fairley now up into second place in the Brabham BT 1119. It is a more modern car, it's a, a car from 1960. Well, the BT 11 was a 1964 Formula One Brabham. Uh, and the BT 19 was in fact the 1966 Formula One Brabham. So it's a car that is uh, rather more modern than the Cooper of Will Nuttall. Runs a bit wide there, coming out of club to complete their seventh lap. So it's John Fairley from Will Nuttall. Michael Gans in fourth place again, ahead of Miles Griffiths. But for how long? Got cars stretch about the Cooper Bristol there, for example, the car that raced in the Drivers' Championship, the Formula 2 car, but in 1952 and 53, the Drivers' World Championship was for Formula 2 cars, so there wasn't no Formula 1 cars being produced to make a decent grid, so they've had them for a large number of Formula 2 cars, in which that Cooper Pistol was won. Here's the Miles Griffiths, Michael Gans, Barry Cannell battle. Michael Gans there, just ahead of the sliding Lotus 16 of Miles Griffiths. Got Tom Dart going past to here, with Ben Tilly right behind him in the Lotus 18, number 69. Both cars from 1960. So John Fairley getting away now, I would say, from Will Nuttall. So Will won yesterday, but he won't be the same today for him. Michael Gans with Miles Griffiths in, third, in fourth and fifth places, Barry Cannell in sixth. And they're heading up towards you now, Alistair. Yes, John Fairley has pulled away from uh, Will Nuttall as they go through Beckett's. And behind, we get Michael Gans, then Miles Griffiths, and Barry Cannell, who was right with them, seems to have lost a bit of ground yeah. on that half a lap. So maybe a moment down at perhaps Luffield. Marino Franchitti enjoying himself in his father-in-law's car, Nick Mason's Maserati 250F. About 20 years ago, 250F Maseratis were the cars to have in historic racing, but they've uh, kind of dropped down the field these days. They're no longer competitive. The only competitive front-engine cars really are this Lotus uh, and the Tecmec Maserati of Tony Wood. That's running in 11th place, number 27, the second of the front-engine cars. And third of the front-engine cars, uh, is going to be Eddie Maguire with the Scarab, number 28 in 13th place. Michael Gans still keeping Miles Griffiths behind him. As they go through to start their last lap, Sam Wilson. And uh, news from the pits, Andrew. Yeah, just very quick update to Ian. Sad to see that the Scarab number 30, Julian Bronson's car, been pushed away. Julian told me actually, uh, the car going a bit better, but it started to overheat and it went over 100, so discretion being the better part of Allah, yeah. he's pulled it in. It's always wonderful to see that American design racing in the massive banner. It's Julian Bronson does such a great job driving it. Oh, he does, yes. It's a car that was too late to be successful in Formula One, a front engine car 
by which time everybody was going rear engine except Ferrari. Just saw 127, I think it was, the Cooper of uh, Steve Hart pulled off at the side of the track. Michael Gans going to be right to the, down to the end of the race that Michael is having this battle with Miles Griffiths. Miles Griffiths determined if he can to get up into fourth place. But it's going to be, I think, too much to ask. Bearing in mind, the Lotus is uh, several years older than the Cooper. But Sam Wilson has done the business for Lotus with the later Lotus, the 1960 Lotus 18. Leading by five and a half seconds as he started this final lap. You've got them going past you, or the leader's already gone, but the next group. Yes, Michael Gans and Miles Griffiths in Beckett's at the moment. Uh, Michael has one slower car to negotiate and he waits till the exit of Beckett's to go through on the inside. Allows Miles Griffiths just to close up a little, but uh, I feel that uh, Michael has the uh, has the place. So Sam Wilson through Stoke Corner into Vale in this beautifully prepared car, which he prepares for its owner. And now through the final corner. So Sam Wilson, who has regularly raced here and won in historic Formula Junior, now wins in Formula One. Historic Formula One with the Lotus 18. Second place goes to John Fairley in the Brabham BT 1119. And Michael Gans holds on for fourth place. Will Luttall having already taken the flag in the number 10 Cooper to take third place. Michael Gans holds off. Miles Griffiths to the line, the Cooper, number 79, finishing ahead of the number one Lotus of Miles Griffiths. Barry Cannell just behind them in the number three Brabham, ahead of Peter Horseman in the number 22 Lotus 18, with 20, 21, Lotus 21 star bodywork. Oh dear, and uh, Andrew had already mentioned problems for one of the Scarabs, and there's the other one, number 28, Eddie Maguire, which actually could cost him a place on the podium because we have a separate podium for the first three drivers of front-engine cars. Well, Miles Griffiths has won that again, as he did yesterday. A fantastic drive there. You dominated the race. Well done. Yeah, I thought it was going to be quite tricky early on. Um, Will, Will, was, uh, Will was driving really well. Uh, I knew he was, going to be, uh, he was going to be giving me hassle, so I thought I'd, I had to press on really hard early on. Now, Ian Titchwash and I have been discussing your helmet, you see, and I'm sure you've based it on a Willie Carlson Porsche 917 from 1970. It certainly is, yeah. I, um, from, a, from a very early age, I was quite obsessed with the Steve McQueen uh, Le Mans films and, uh, and obviously 917s and all that era of cars. And the, nine, and the psychedelic 917, thought the colour scheme was fantastic, so... There you are, so we were right. And, uh, Maybe you'll get to drive a 917 one day. Well, if there's anybody out there that wants a driver, I'm, uh, I'm waiting. Well, well done. <laughs> Outstanding drive. Good way to finish your classic meeting. Thank Let's you. Uh, just move over then uh, to... Uh... John Fairley. So, uh, congratulations on your second place. Thank and uh, it, it works better in the dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're more comfortable in the dry. Yeah, definitely. We, we messed about with settings yesterday, got it all wrong, but back to the dry settings today, and it seems to like the dry. So do I. <laughs> and have you owned this car? I mean, it's got a fantastic history, this car, hasn't it? It has. It was run, it, driven in 1965 by Dan Gurney and Denny Holm. Um, it was the works development car for the 6619. It won the first three litre Grand Prix with a 2.7 climax in it with Jack Brabham driving it. And then had a, a long history in South Africa with Dave Child. Who was a great driver and a friend it of mine. Was, yeah, yeah, definitely was. Very well done. Uh, we set you off to the podium. And uh, maybe we'll just move in with Miles Griffiths a second. Miles is uh, down here. Well, you didn't lead this time. <laughs> No, no. Uh, we tried, but unfortunately, the rear engine cars were just a bit too much for us. Absolutely, because it wasn't wet today. It made a bit of a difference. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting us to actually be on terms in the dry, but couldn't do it. I went as fast as we could, had great fun, and we ended up where we ended up. And you won the front engine class. It can't be too bad. No, no. So very happy with that. Had a great weekend overall. I had a wonderful weekend. Very well driven all weekend. Thank you very much. Cheers. 
for race 19 of the weekend, our second race of the weekend for the Galet Trophy for pre-66 Grand Prix cars. Delighted to say we've got once again two podiums as we had yesterday for the Galet Trophy for Grand Prix cars and also the Galet Trophy for front engine Grand Prix cars as well. And another special award, it being our second and final race for the Galet Trophy. Let's get on with the uh, Grand Prix cars first of all, the overall top three and get the drivers onto the podium in reverse order, starting with third place, number 10, yesterday's winner, Will Nuttall. Congratulations, Will. Makes his way onto the po Oh, no little Amelia today. No, can't find her. Okay, well, well uh, wrong end, wrong end. There we go. On to the other end of the... That's perfect. There we go. Will Nuttall on the third step. In second place, number 11, John Fairley. Well done, John. Congratulations. Climbs aboard the second step of the podium. And then to our winner, number 18, Sam Wilson. Well done, Sam. Congratulate. Oh, who's this? This is Oscar. Hello, Oscar. How old is Oscar? Oscar's 15 months. 15 months old. Goodness me. There we go. On to the top step of the podium along with Oscar. And I'm delighted to say... Oh, it's become a it's become a family affair. Who is this? This is Joseph. Okay, very good, Joseph. Congratulations. Well done to Dad. Let's get uh, David Patterson, the managing director of Superguard, onto the podium to make the presentation. Starting with the uh, well, the man that started bringing youngsters onto the podium, but he's empty-handed today. So we give him the third place trophy, and Will Nuttall gets third place in second place to John Fairley. Well done, John. And he gets a cheer from the crowd. And then to our winner, Sam Wilson, who takes a garland around his neck, is av available for drives following the interview that he just did with Andrew Marriott. And he's our winner for the Galet Trophy for pre-66 Grand Prix cars. And they all pose together with their respective families. And if they stay exactly where they are, I'd like to introduce the, uh, the boss man of the Silverstone Classic. Nick Wigley is here to present a special award to the winner of the race, which is a quite beautiful Galet Racing Heritage chronograph. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful timepiece, which I think was possibly a bit of a surprise. Nick, I think probably it's best to hang on to that watch and uh, uh, <laughs> so he doesn't drop it. But yeah, close it up. Keep it nice and safe. And that's Sam Wilson, the recipient of a quite beautiful Galley Racing Heritage chronograph. Well done. That's a rather nice piece of icing on the cake, isn't it? And a lovely photograph of all of them together, please, on the top step of the podium, if we can. Bunch up nice and close. And we get the photograph of the Galley Trophy for Grand Prix cars podium. And now we move on to the Galley Trophy for front engine Grand Prix cars. So well done to all of our drivers on the podium in the first element of our podium presentation. And then we dress the podium, get it ready with the trophies and the winner's garland as well, the Galet Trophy for front engine Grand Prix cars. And we'll press on getting the drivers onto the podium in reverse order, starting with third place, number 25, Marino Franchitti. Well done, Marino. Nice to see you. Well done. Third step of the podium for Marino. In second place, number 27, Tony Wood. Well done, Tony. Congratulations. Step number two of the podium, if you please. And it's been a great Silverstone Classic for the winner, Miles Griffiths. Well done, Miles. Congratulations. You know the order. Top step of the podium, he goes once again. And David, if you'd like to come onto the podium to make the presentation, first of all, to third place to Marino Franchitti said in an earlier interview that he's here to enjoy this and he certainly is well done well done to our second place tony wood and then to miles griffiths on the top step of the podium a handshake and a silverstone classic winner's trophy in the hands of miles griffiths he's got quite a few of those from the weekend haven't you now let's get all the drivers together on the top step of the podium Got a nice photograph of all three of you. We've already heard from our winner, Miles Griffiths, with Andrew down in the pit lane. So that scene concludes the podium presentation for race number 19 of the weekend, the Galet Trophy for pre-66 Grand Prix cars.